Australian researchers Julie Henry and Peter Rendell found that pregnant women experience loss of memory, which can last up to a year after childbirth. Other studies also revealed that many women suffer depression after childbirth, clinically known as postpartum depression. Today on Moments, we're going to be talking to people who know a lot about depression. Welcome to Moments. Hey, uh -huh. Hi. Hi, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I find this a very fascinating uh, topic and conversation. Mm. You know, we're talking about depression specifically for women yeah. who have just had a child and just delivered. And it's interesting because I know that globally, not only in Africa, mm -hmm. it's a topic, it's a taboo. You know, the fact that yeah. a woman could have a child and afterwards, instead of feeling feelings of joy and happiness mm -hmm. and a bond with her child, she, the feelings are one of resentment you yeah. know, sadness and not wanting to even look at the child or even talk less carry the child, mm. which a lot of mm. women have actually spoken about. Mm. I agree, I agree. I mean, but what's important to keep in mind is that it is a psychological disorder. Obviously, mm. these women would not choose to feel that way mm. about their, you know, their newborn child or children. Mm -hmm. It's something that they just find their minds wandering and, you know, they find these feelings creeping up on them. Um, and I think it's something that needs to be, they need help. Mm -hmm. you know and they need support mm -hmm. not condemnation I think, that, I think that's the key thing yeah. to keep in mind definitely mm. now it's going to be a very interesting episode we're going to be joined by our first guest her name is Cynthia Okmala and she's a TV producer and she'll be with us shortly Welcome back to Moments Nigeria. Our topic today is depression after childbirth, and we're joined by our first guest. Her name is Cynthia Okwala, also known as Sivon. She is the first winner of the MTV Base VJ Search, and she's also a producer here at Ebony Life TV. Cynthia, welcome to Moments. Welcome to Thank Moments, you Cynthia. for having me. How does you it feel welcome. to like be on Moments? Because you've never been on Moments, have you? No. Yes. I haven't actually. Wow. I was on the spot, but never. You've been on the spot, yes. but not moments. Yes. Oh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you. Like, you're like, it's cool to be here. <laughs> yeah, you know, you're our people, so we can really, we yes. can really ask you those questions without yeah. feeling any yeah. type of way. And I'm so glad that you're being open and honest about this. You know, we're talking about depression after childbirth. Yeah. Cynthia, you have two babies, even though you don't look like yeah. Well, <laughs> Thank um, you. And you mentioned you had, were depressed after both children, after having both children. Yes. So can you just explain like? The process did it start while you were pregnant or was it something that happened immediately after no i mean i had an easy pregnancy with okay. both pregnancies um the first one i mean like first time moms i had like you know the regular worry like what's it going to be like i've always been afraid of the whole birthing process itself mm -hmm. but you know going through anti prenatals you know you're taught you know this is how it's going to happen so you pretty mm -hmm. much just prepare yourself and i remember one of the nurses saying you know, you actually get tired of being pregnant, that you look forward to the pain of labor. And mm. I was like, ah, my pain threshold is like, mm. eh, you know. Mm -hmm. But you know, as the pregnancy progressed, I, you know, I actually did look forward to it. And so I was going to have my first son in the US. And I traveled and I started reading so much about um, water births and, you know, things that you could do, workouts. So mm. I was really into all of that because I wanted to have like a natural birthing process. Mm -hmm. So you weren't worried about the pain? No, okay. not okay. really. Because, you know, I, I mean, I, I was reading about it and they're like, oh, it's going to, I was like, can't be more than 24 hours. Like, you know, it would be done, right? Mm -hmm. And then into the ninth month, um, I, so I got a midwife, I got a doula, okay. you know, registered with the birthing center and all of those. And then sometime around 36 weeks, I, I think I'd gone for a, uh, a scan and then they found out that the baby was breached. And at that point in the pregnancy, it was kind of, you know, it's dangerous because, you know, because mm. the baby's big and there's not enough room for mm. him to move around okay again. so he wasn't facing the right direction yeah so his head was up that's okay. what he means and okay. you know ideally the baby's head is supposed to be Sit down, down. Mm. and then you know even your the pregnancy is supposed to have settled somewhere around but he was yeah. still i was still carrying high okay mm. i still would stay so I'd, I'd been sent to this chinese place for some acupuncture or whatever because i was like i need to i want to have a natural birth okay. so everything for this baby to turn mm. you know but then and then he turned 40 weeks my water broke Okay. Um, I was at the mall with my cousin mm -hmm. in the US. <laughs> so it broke in the mall. That's quite dramatic. Yeah. <laughs> and it was like dramatic. 11 p.m. Wow. So the mall had closed, but we're in the salon. She was getting her daughter's hair done. Mm -hmm. And then I had been sitting there and I was tired. And then I got up to leave and it was like, Psh. oh, wow. Like, holy. <laughs> <laughs> so we went home, packed, and then, you know, we left, got to the hospital, and then they found that he was breached again. So like, okay, so we're going to have a C-section. Mm. Wow. But mentally, I was prepared for it. So it wasn't like, you know, I was like, oh, okay. Mm. Mm. So I had C-section, baby was out in 10 minutes. And then 
you know, and and then I was waiting for it. You know, like how like people have their babies the and then they're the gushing and yes, yes. But I just I didn't feel anything because I remember them say, "Oh, here's your baby." Mm. I looked at him. My house like okay, but I didn't feel anything. That oh, emotion didn't come. And so, what about when you know you started breastfeeding? Because they say that once you know the baby latches on, mm -hmm. that's what you hear. Then that emotion comes through, and you just feel very affectionate and bonded. Nothing. I, like didn't, the child. I didn't feel any of it. Mm. So, how long did that emotion of not feeling as attached to your first son last for? So there was no, there was no particular attachment. It was just okay. So I have a child now. I'm glad he's healthy. Ten toes, ten fingers. You know, he's healthy. But there was there was nothing. And then. We left the hospital after four or five days. We, I think it was even easier when I was in the hospital because mm. I didn't have anything else to do than just take care of him. Mm. But when we got back home from the hospital, that's when it actually did kick in. Mm. You know, I'm just like, I can't do this. Like, this is too much. Mm. You know, I, I was, because usually, like, I'm very energetic, but, you know, I just wasn't interested in anything, taking care of the baby. I'm like, I'm like the baby's crying. I'm just like, I don't think I can do this. Like, it's just too much. Mm. So at that time, I felt it was the pressure of having your first child without your mom around. Because you know how we mm -hmm. are here. Mm -hmm. yes. you, know, you always have family. So I'm yes. like, this, yeah. I'm not feeling this whole setup. There's really nobody here. I have to do everything myself, cook, take care of him. So I wasn't sleeping enough. Mm. So I said, okay, maybe that's what it was. But mm. I just didn't enjoy that whole experience with my first son. And with, we left the hospital. And with your second child, you had the same reoccurring emotions. You were now, the, detached. The second child was when I realized, okay, this might actually be a thing. Because... When I, I found out I was pregnant with the second one when the first one was nine months. Wow. wow. Yes. And then, you know, my husband at the time had said, oh, so maybe we should plan going to the U.S. And, you know, I just think he said, mm -mm. And here's what I said. I said, I don't want to toss the baby in the river. Wow. wow. I actually wow. said that. And then, you know, we laughed about it. But, you know, I was like, I was like, yes, it might actually happen. Remember what I had gone through with the first one. Mm. So that means that that emotion was so strong. Yeah. Like just and, I and I actually remember it. So you is know? it an yeah. emotion of resentment? It was just like, why are you here ruining my life? Like, I can't understand why you're crying so much. Mm. Wow. And I actually do remember one incident. And actually, I can't remember, I think it was late at night, 4 a.m. I hadn't slept, I hadn't eaten, and then he was just crying. Then I looked at him, he was probably like a week old, and I literally shook him. Mm. Like, mm. you know, and then he, he was crying, and then, you know, he was startled, and then he now started crying. crying and he started mm. just like, what the hell did you just do? Yeah. You shook a one week old baby? Really? So is that where you snapped and you realized yeah, there was something like, okay. wrong? Yes. Mm. Now, Cynthia, I want us to talk a little bit about, we'll talk about the process of coming out of that depression and if you saw any treatment. And we'll be joined by a gynecologist who will also be sharing the medical perspective and their um, opinions and thoughts on postpartum depression. Coming up shortly, the conversation continues. Welcome back to Moments Nigeria. Our topic today is depression after childbirth. And we're now joined by another guest, Dr. Okoji, who is a gynecologist. So, you know, welcome to Moments. So nice Thank to have you, you on the show. Welcome. Thank you. So how, you know, from a, from a medical point of view, how is um, postnatal depression diagnosed? What are some of the symptoms that loved ones can look for, okay. you know, in someone who they suspect is suffering from it? Um, postpartum depression usually can present in the mild form. Um, like postpartum blues or matern maternal blues and um, the patient presents with symptoms that usually develop about two to three days after delivery oh so soon and yes but it's self-limiting within a week or two after the onset it resolves okay mm -hmm. usually the patient is um, irritable okay weepy crying there is poor concentration and poor sleep okay but that usually does not need any treatment, just counsel the patient and her relatives, encourage some type of mm. family support. And within two weeks or, or thereabouts, it resolves. Mm. However, for postpartum depression, which is more severe, mm. um, it can um, occur any time after delivery, but that usually lasts at least two weeks and may continue even longer for mm. months or years, okay? And the patient ex um, um, has persistent low moods, okay? Mm -hmm. Which should be present for at least two weeks or more. Mm. So the relatives are able to recognize that there's something wrong. Mm. This patient, that usually, this person, uh, my daughter, or my wife or whoever, usually finds pleasure in doing some things, all of a sudden doesn't um, have pleasure again. And um, she has poor sleep, sometimes early wakening, for mm. example, mm. wakes at 2 a.m. Is not able to go back to sleep even till morning mm. and wakes up exhausted. So it's like a visual cycle. Mm. Can't even sleep sometimes, poor concentration. 
and sometimes you have some feeling of hopelessness or guilt mm. depending on how the pregnancy has been she had a turbulent pregnancy mm. which could be risk factors for developing postpartum depression mm -hmm. then more less than often you may have some medical um, symptoms that may develop in postpartum depression which may mask the early diagnosis and treatment such as general body weakness and um, general body pain, headaches. Mm, mm. So an experienced practitioner may just think that it's something else and not focus on postpartum and depression. depression okay. Patients may also present with some hypochondriac tendencies. Really? You have women who, after delivery, keep on complaining of non-specific illnesses concerning them or their babies, come to the hospital frequently. So mm, mm. the hospital people actually know them, okay, she's come again, she's come again. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. and okay. unfortunately with mental illness in the environment, there's a stigma yes. which sometimes yeah. prevents patients from even so open up and yeah. speaking out. Yeah, and I think not only it's just definitely. here, I mean, I think globally. It's globally, it's globally, know, but people are um, really like. In, develop, in developed countries, they are more open to speaking up because you have help yeah. readily available. Yeah. But that's also but becoming more frequent because I know someone like, um, she's a popular comedian in America. She was very, very big on making sure that she spoke about out yes. about her postpartum depression yeah, you because have, of you have stigma. support groups mm. there okay where people are able to speak yeah. out and receive help but it's not very established yet. so what about mm. here what do we have available well i'm not aware of any support group mm -hmm. for postpartum depression really? that's terrible okay so you also have um, a lack of what we we'll term multidisciplinary care also here mm. and um, most people most times are undiagnosed okay so relatives and medical practitioners need a high index of suspicion mm to be able to recognize the symptoms and refer the patient to seek help as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. So Cynthia, you know, in your case, you spoke to us about how you, know, you went through it twice with your two children. So the second time you had a handle on it and you realized what was happening. Um, how did you go about seeking help and were there enough available health services in Nigeria to help you treat the, the postnatal depression? Not really. Like I said, with the second one, that was when I realized, okay, this is actually a problem. Mm. And my mom spotted it because she was in a hospital with me. So she okay. was like, I mean, you're not happy. You're not cheerful. What's going on? I was like, I don't. She was like, oh, your baby, you know, carry your baby. It's really always carry your baby. I'm like, allow the baby sleep. Mm. You know, the baby said, let him be. Let him be in the court. You know, she always bring the baby to me, but I just didn't want any of it. Mm. Mm. You know, so, but she kept, you know, trying to, you know, tell me, you had this baby, you're healthy, you know, you're alive. Mm. So she just kept trying to talk me out of it. Mm -hmm. And I said, that lasted about, I mean, it, I would say maybe getting back home into my own natural environment yes. kind of helped ease me out of this mm -hmm. okay. the second time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So after I got home, it took me about four or five days and, you know, it's not then you know i'm slowly warming to be i'm like oh, okay looking at him he has my eyes and, and you know <laughs> wow. slowly i started getting one but before that mm. it was like but it was a slow process for it you. was a slow yeah. process very mm. interesting now mm. you know as a gynecologist you're with the woman during okay. her pregnancy are there any signs or indications that after childbirth she could experience postpartum depression yeah, okay so you there are risk factors for um, developing postpartum depression however some women may not have any discernible risk factors so a woman who already has some form of depression prior to pregnancy is, is mm -hmm. very likely to experience postpartum depression. A woman who has a family history of mental in, uh, illness so is, is also likely. Then any um, stressful life, life event, okay, you may have an uns unsupportive spouse, an abusive marriage, okay, then if, you, if she experiences a turbulent pregnancy, okay, anything that will cause, for example, a prolonged hospitalization for probably she's bleeding and has to be on admission from um, a early on in the pregnancy to delivery or a woman who experiences the death of a baby while she's pregnant okay oh. or dying after delivery having a stillbirth or any time mm -hmm. after delivery and um, women who have um, twins or triplets or quadruplets without a good family support and can't take care of all the babies at the same time. Mm -hmm. Then less commonly, not being able to have um, a desired gender. For example, women who, mm -hmm. for example, a woman who has six girls, currently mm -hmm. pregnant for the seventh one and finds out it's a girl. So even before the baby comes, mm -hmm. she's already um, a bit depressed and mm -hmm. is not able to move out of it. So those are the risk factors that the doctor can see okay, and watch out for. Um, natal mm. depression or even blues and manage it well. Fantastic. And you know, I'm interested to know if untreated, yeah. um, what, what can it lead to? What can happen? Okay. Um, untreated can let it develop into more severe forms. Okay. okay. Um, severe forms, patients start having, having some form of suicidal wow. additions or thoughts, um, thoughts of harming the baby, yeah. or, or even partners. I've had, heard of cases of um, women 
um, who drown babies in the bathtub mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or even kill the other children that she has in the house, okay? Ah. Then it can lead to even psychosis. You start having delusions, has hallucinations and all. So it's, if not detected on time and treated, so it can re result in more severe forms okay. of depression. Well, thank you so much, doctor, for coming. Thank and thank you, you, Cynthia, for being so thank open you, and honest. I think it's very, very important that a lot more women come out and speak about this. Coming up shortly, our next guest is a psychiatrist who will be talking to us about treatment options for women who suffer postpartum depression. Welcome back to Moments Nigeria. So we're talking about depression after childbirth today and we have with us Dr. Esan Baido who is our second guest and she is a psychiatrist. So nice to have you on welcome our show. Welcome to the show. Thank you welcome, very much. Welcome, So, you know, a lot of people don't believe that, you know, uh, in depression after childbirth is something real they feel people are overreacting and all that kind of thing so what are the symptoms and what makes women likely to suffer depression after they've had children um thank you very much well um it is not a myth that you can have depression after childbirth mm. um, you actually have um, symptoms and signs of, of depression after childbirth in some women Actually, about 80% of women would experience mood changes. Okay. Is that uh, because of a traumatic um, birth incident or that can be just caused by a variety of factors? It doesn't. It's not really about the trauma of birth because for the first time mothers who have never experienced it, what would be causing it? Well, um, that's um, family predisposition, genetic predisposition, environmental factors. And you know all the things where you hear women say, oh, you should be able to get back in shape when you have a baby, you should be able to take control of your family, mm. you should be able to get back to work. All those things make them internalize mm. the fears of not being able and they feel like they're not able to meet up the expectations mm. of, um, should I say, the, um, the community or um, the environment. Okay. So this can make them break down. About 80% of uh, women who have had babies experience mood changes, mm. not even when they have babies alone, even before. So during, so during pregnancy. Yeah, during, during pregnancy, some of them may experience mood changes. That's where you see a lot of women cry, mm -hmm. they can get easily irritable. So you know, that's why they say, oh, she's pregnant, just let her be. Mm -hmm. you know? So Those I mean, things. how do you know the difference between where it's just your hormones that are overreacting and you actually have postpartum depression? Some symptoms will be there, but they're not so much to cause this woman to be, um, be depressed. Okay. You have things like low mood. Some people may have that persistent low mood for a period of time. Some people might just have it in maybe the early hours of the day, and as the day gets um, goes by, they get better. So you have a couple of um, symptoms that put together will give you um, depression. But if you don't meet those criteria for those symptoms, you can't say the woman has depression. Take, for example, you have a woman with low mood, she's not interested in certain things, mm. probably has poor appetite. Mm. That's some form of um, depression, but it's not severe. Okay. But some people can have it bad, low mood, low energy, they're not interested in anything, mm. not eating, not sleeping. They may even become suicidal. Mm. Now that is severe. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm. Then. Some women wouldn't even want to take care of the baby. Yeah. You know, yes, they don't I've heard about that. Because, I mean, there's yeah. certain cases where you hear of the woman kind of rejecting the baby, not wanting mm. to bond with the baby, yes, yes. feeling maybe the baby is a burden, you know. So is that also categorized as uh, postnatal depression? Yeah, in some form. It could be depression, but in another form it could be psychosis. You know, for the depressive part, when a woman is withdrawn, this is uh, withdraw, um, being socially withdrawn is also mm -hmm. a sign of um, depression. When a woman mm -hmm. is withdrawn, she is not interested in that baby. Mm -hmm. That baby is not giving her the joy she expected. So she has a tendency of not touching the baby, mm -hmm. of not mm -hmm. wanting to do anything. Or she's overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. She's just had a baby. Mm -hmm. Okay, oh, this fine little thing, I have to take care of this. Mm -hmm. Oh, if, if this baby drops, if this baby gets ill, yeah. if I'm the one that has to take yeah. her. So she's overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. And at the point, she may lose it and not know what to do. Now, for any mom at home who's watching in this and they can identify with the fact that they're depressed, you know, how can they seek treatment? You can talk 
talk therapy, family members, if you have a good support system, that's where we ask the husband to come in. That's why we should advocate for paternity leave for uh, husbands too, mm -hmm. so that they can help support in taking care of the child and taking care of the woman and also other family support. Now for those who really have frank depression, low mood, loss of pleasurable interest in things they used to enjoy doing, not taking care of the baby, withdrawal, may become suicidal, they need to seek help from the psychiatrist. Is a medication a common form of treating postnatal depression? Well, it depends on the type of depression. If it's between severe and moderate, you don't. You just need talk therapy. You say the psychologist, good family support. Yes. But when it becomes severe, Yes, medications have to come in. Okay. 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 All right. Well, thank you so much, Doctor, for coming on thank the show you. and enlightening us. Welcome back to Moments Nigeria. Our topic today is depression after childbirth. And finally, in a nutshell, you know, especially hearing from Cynthia, what I realize is women may be going through this who don't even realize that they're going through this. They just know they're feeling a bit out of sorts. They're a bit down. They're not really bonding with mm -hmm. their child. But they might think, oh, maybe I'm just missing my old identity of being a single um, uh, childless woman. And this is just an adjustment period. Yeah. So I think it's important for people around to really be able to spot the signs of postnatal depression so they can get, you know, the appropriate treatment. And I think also it's interesting because I always say, you know, specifically with social media and the way people talk about their children, I'm like, I wonder if our parents look at us like, what are these ones talking? You know, because the way people talk about childbirth, like, it's just amazing and mm. it's just this thing and it's so um, heightened and it's so yeah. hyper, you know... Hyper hyperbolic almost. Yeah, mm -hmm. almost. And, and I think those kind of narratives don't allow women who are struggling to yeah. be as open as honest. I agree. So in a nutshell, you know, don't feel pressure. If you are struggling with depression after having a child, we really do hope that you will seek some counsel and some help and you will talk to your gynecologist and also see a psychiatrist or a psychologist who would be able to help you. And again, we always say, please don't condemn because like Tallulah said, it is a mental illness and um, it's definitely something that can be treated. So thank you so much for joining us in another episode of Moments Nigeria. And always remember, if you can think it, you can do it.